Welcome and thank you for joining CivilNet. Today our guest is Mr. Urs Hauenstein and he's the president and the visiting professor for business management at the International Council, the Swiss Quality Institute of Competences and Qualifications. And the list goes on, but um, we have limited time. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Urs. And I was at your lecture yesterday at the Russian Armenian University and you spoke so much about competency portfolio, circular economies, the fourth, the third and the fourth industrial revolution and uh, management and leadership. And I was wondering how much of that applies to Armenia and your experience, recent experience with Armenia. And maybe we could just open the parentheses and just try to bring all the information that you, you, you were talking about yesterday into Armenia's reality. Um, so, Leadership, let's start with that. You're here firstly for as a consultant to a leadership school that Armenia will soon have. And uh, concepts of leadership can be diff diff different in Armenia, I suppose, as to concepts of leadership that uh, a lot of uh, Western countries have achieved so far. Uh, what's your take on that? I'm now uh, the third day, first time in Armenia and I'm uh, blown away uh, when I see uh, how uh, Armenia is really. Uh, I didn't expect it that. And uh, I, I think there is not so many other situations or, or, uh, or, or needs in Armenia than uh, you will find in London or you will find in Geneva. Uh, Armenia uh, and Yerevan especially is an international city and is, is, uh, is doing that very professional and can be binded together with the worlds, with the outer worlds. And, uh, but I think we need everywhere new concepts of leadership, new leadership. And I think there should be an authentic Armenian leadership in the future. I think that is very important. So yes, I think there can, can be done several things. Several things can be initiated, should be initiated immediately in Armenia. But I think uh, I'm feeling very comfortable to, to help and to support. Yeah. And when you say authentic Armenian leadership, what can be the components of that authentic authenticity? I think authenticity as, as, as main components, to be real, to, to show real feelings, the heart, to show uh, what the thoughts are and yeah, to show what the roots are. I think the roots of a nation, that is very important, the roots of people the thoughts of families and the history. And Armenia has a huge history, a huge pathway to the roots. But I think forgot or didn't use that anymore within the last some years to present, to show, I think, the highness, the greatness, the, the huge capacity of Armenia is not anymore in mind uh, of Europeans, for instance, or of people uh, in the international community. So maybe someone would ask, what's the value of that for the Western world? If we're talking leadership and we're talking not only internal leadership, we're talking leadership representation outside of Armenia. And w what's the value of that history for the Western world? We are learning from that history. We want to have this field of experiences. It is a big value for the world, of course. And we, we are very, we are all very interested on this long history of Armenia. And therefore, please, all Armenians, show that to the outer world. Speak about that, present that, because this is the field where we learn. People learn not in, in big lectures, people learn in life. And the history and the long way of experiences of Armenia, that is life. And you've also spoken about learning yeah. and uh, your own uh, concepts of how learning should occur. Yeah. And in this case, we're talking about learning also leadership. I, I can 
explain that very, uh, very brief in an example. When you have a class, you have the pupils or the students and you have the prof, the teacher. Then we know nowadays that, of course, one person is really learning and that is the teacher. So sustainable learning is not given when you use the old-fashioned met methodology uh, who is used to be uh, done in schools. We need to change the pupils and the students to teachers and should advise them how they can teach and not the teacher should teach, the students should teach because only the persons who are teaching are learning sustainable. So we have to change it 100%, not the, teach, not the, the pupils and students has to look to the teacher, the teacher has to mentor and guide the students and pupils. And then they will create it, then the knowledge and the message will be from their heart and then it will be sustainable. And then it is in their mind and it is in their heart and then it is authentic. Mr. Hauenstein, you, for, in your experience for a country such as, like Armenia's, that has Armenia's history, and I know you've had experience working in Kosovo, for example, for such grandfathered ideas of teacher-student relationship, leader-follower relationship, to start changing, how much time do you, do you estimate it will take and what's the possibility of that happening? Because I think a genera shift of generation is definitely needed for this. I think, of course, you can do it the old-fashioned way and then we need years. But I think we have to look to the urgency and the priority. And if we see the priority is high, then we have to do it now, not next year, now, today, uh, as soon as possible. And I think uh, that is the way and the method. When you have 100 things on your to-dos list, then you think, oh gosh, it's not possible to solve everything. But you know and I know we can solve everything very quick. It is only a matter of urgency and priority we are giving, given it to, to this. When we give the priority to this, that we have to change leadership because otherwise we don't will have success. When we bind it to success, then, of course, we can do that immediately. And then we, have, we will have testimonials. And we has to do with the media, present it, to everybody and then everybody will understand that we don't have a leader and the leader has followers. The followers are the leaders and the leader has to follow his followers or the people around and if we can do that we will have sustainable future and we can change everything. And another question, maybe this is more of a, from coming from psychology. Do we have that understanding of the urgency? I think yes. When you see how dramatic the situation is at the moment in the world with resources, with energy problems, with food uh, problems, when you see the migration difficulty at the moment, uh, uh, when you see the national uh, urgencies of Armenia at the moment with these uh, difficult, aggressive situations with, on the border. Yeah, these are priorities. These are A1 priorities. And when you see that maybe this is connected with a change of leaders, then you have to do it. So we certainly saw this in the past month with the start of the conf uh, re re activation of the conflict on the on the contact line and seems to be all our resources and attention is concentrated on Nagorno-Karabakh and we definitely don't know how, how long this is going to take. It can, it can take a year, it can take another 20 as it has done before. So change within such a time and within a conflicting situation, is this a additional drive for change or is this something to be cautious about in your experience? It shows only the situation that the change not was done uh, uh, fully. 
I think when you are convinced about a change, then you can do it. When you are semi-convinced, then you need 20 years. So I think this is the problem of the mission, of the communication in between the stakeholders. I think when only a, a small percentage of a community is doing something, and when it is not before communicated with all stakeholders, I think then it will have a big problem of time. But I think that is the need. First of all, everything should be communicated, discussed, and solved with all stakeholders. That means stakeholders in the process. People who are living in Armenia should be able to, to communicate with the parties, with the, with the government as well. And if this is done at the base, then the decisions are also from the base. And then a change can be done very, very quick. You also spoke about outcome-oriented management. Is this an example of such an outcome-oriented management that will bring about change? Yes. I think the whole world at the moment is, is on the way to outcome-oriented learning and methods. Uh, look, over centuries, we everywhere had uh, done big initiatives. We have invested money, big resources into initiatives, and we didn't have sustainable results. We didn't have a real outcome. And therefore now, uh, people are going and I want to see that. I want to have seven seals and signatures beyond it before I say I'm behind it. So if you can show people that you're doing something for an outcome, outcome-oriented control, if you combine that with quality management, who is controlling that, who is supervising that, when you have a glass house, and everybody can see in everything, in all decisions, then you have transparency. And we need, in this change, transparent decisions. And then everything can be done very quick, very short, very, yeah, successful. You speak about authentic branding that Armenia will need. And um, other than the authenticity of history and character and heart, uh, what industries or what domains should be part of on the front line of this branding for Armenia and if, from what you saw? I think all of them, what you said already, are not out of them. They are in bed. So I think we need an authentic branding of everything. That means we need the mirror of, of uh, Armenia. We need that media look very clearly to to the gritty meaty things, to, to the daily behaviors. Uh, the world wants to see Armenia, wants to hear and feel Armenia, wants to see how Armenian, Armenians are thinking and how their, their heart is. So I think that is important to show Armenians and the outer world what is the reality? And then we can discuss what is needed next. But first we need the reality, only the reality, the truth. We don't want to have any faked other things or proposals or good ideas. We need first the truth on the table. And then uh, uh, we find the next step very quick. Uh, from previous <clears throat> interviews with many difficult, uh, like venture capitalists who work in Armenia, political analysts, a lot of this idea comes forward very often as la a lack of self-confidence. Do you think this is a factor hindering, that, uh, is this factor that's kept Armenia from authentic uh, branding so far? I think, yes. I think self-confidence is, uh, is uh, something who is needed for empowering people and is very essential. And I think at the moment, uh, Armenians don't have enough self-confidence, of course. 
And one more question about the leadership academy that's going to be open in Armenia pretty soon, I think, in a matter of months, and your role and your involvement with the academy. I will be a partner of it, not only a consultant. So uh, I do that as well for me, because uh, um, I, when I see a project is highly important, then I try to be a stakeholder or a partner, because then I know I'm, I'm within the process. And I saw yesterday the students in, in, in the university and their, their uh, real questions and needs. I saw their eyes, you know, and I saw in their eyes the really needs of them. And that is that was, is attaching my heart, uh, what is bringing me in activity. And now I'm uh, initiated for activities. So therefore, we confirmed with the rectorate uh, that we want to start in October. Uh, we will start with short uh, uh, modules uh, with uh, uh, certificates. And our goal will be leadership in direction that we can do that as postgraduate programs. Uh, we will uh, follow uh, later with a doctoral school for that, but we start with master courses. And when we speak about leadership, then I don't want to think only on leadership in bits, in business. I'm speaking about leadership for all areas. That means leadership for the police, leadership for the fire rescue, leadership for the hospital, leadership for schools, uh, for kindergartens, as you said yesterday. Or, or leadership for business, but leadership for events and festivals and, and, and theaters. All leadership positions has to be changed because we want to have a change of the world now and for the future. And therefore, we have to change the roadmaps everywhere. And we have to change as well the roadmaps of Armenians, of Armenia, uh, that we have a change and a success story again for the future of this nation, and a success story with all stakeholders, not only with the government. I think that is important. Thank you very much, and we'll be looking forward to having you back at CivilNet and follow up on, on, on our <laughs> developments, and thank you for the viewers for joining us. Mm -hmm.